Hey guys, we're back. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run some analysis. Um, so some of the analysis that we have is built in to here, right? So any of these ones here um, that have the Q on them are built in. You also have GDAL, which is a built-in uh, program. And then in my case, you probably see a couple of things that you don't have in yours. So for example, this semi-automatic classification, uh, this QGIS to web, don't worry, we're doing that in a bit, and then this data plotly. Uh, so these ones are what are called plugins. And so any sort of thing that you want to extend to use to extend out your QGIS can be found in here. So in our case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in one that's uh, available for us to do spatial autocorrelation. So just as a reminder, spatial autocorrelation is based off the idea that everything is related together in space, like in, in an area. Uh, but closer things are more related than far things. So this is based on basically the idea that things cluster together or that things, um, or to test the idea as to whether or not data is clustered or if it's random. Uh, and so this is useful for a variety of reasons. One, um, it allows you to run other statistics if your data does happen to be random. Uh, because that is an assumption for most parametric statistics, is that your data is randomly distributed. If data is clustered, it's not randomly distributed, which means that the statistics you run have to be different. So that's one of the reasons we test it. But it also lets us uh, see whether or not our data is clustered and where it is clustered. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top here where it says plugins. So if I go up to the top where it says plugins, uh, I can go to what's called manage and install plugins. This is going to pop up with my manager here. And so in my case, you'll see a whole bunch of them that are already installed. You probably won't have very many that are installed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to all and we're going to go to what is called visualist. Uh, this is a crime one that has been built up. So in here it says plugin for crime analysts. The goal of visualist is to provide a one stop resource for many common crime analyst GIS tasks without the need for additional software libraries or complex workarounds. If you use a visualist in a scientific publication, they'd appreciate a citation, which is this, which is totally fine. Uh, so what it also has in here is a variety of different things that get used, right? So graduated line maps, proportional symbol maps, K nearest neighbors analysis, chloropleth maps, ELISA analysis, and a spatial autocorrelation map. So those are some of the ones that we're going to need, particularly this ELISA analysis and the spatial autocorrelation. So we're going to install this plugin. Now you can do this with a variety of different things. There are, if you go to all here and you take out this, these are all of the different plugins that have been built into Q uh, that basically Q has at least kind of signed off on. Uh, but there's still other ones you, that you can find in places like GitHub uh, that have zip files that you can install as well. Um, one thing I will say is uh, just a common open source thing, which is a little bit of buyer beware. So some of these are a little bit buggy. Some of these don't work super well. Some of them are not going to work across all of the different um, releases of Q with GIS. So right now I'm working on 3.407. Um, and so it might not work for all of them. So you want to take a look at how good is the rating. Some of these are going to be less well rated than others. Some of them are going to be more well rated. So this one is an archaeological geophysics toolbox, super highly, super highly done. It was like this one, this one's got really good reviews. It's been downloaded a lot. It's probably fine. Others of them, a little bit less so, right? So all of these ones are pretty good. Um, I've had issues with some, but again, it's going to be just keep in mind what is that, that not all things are necessarily going to work equally well in all cases. Anyway, so we have that now and I am going to close out of that. Now with plugins, they end up going in kind of random areas. Sometimes you'll see them up here. So for example, I had this base map management one up here. Uh, so that's going to be up there, but sometimes they end up in other places. So I've got another one, this HCMGIS. That's a plugin under web. I've got QGIS to web and quick map services. These ones are both plugins. 
you'll notice that Visualist isn't actually in those ones. Instead, Visualist shows up where I had mentioned the semi-automatic classification one showed up. Um, and the semi-automatic classification one also shows up here, right? So there's a lot of weird places that these things show up. So for Visualist, what I'm going to do is this is where I'm going to go and run some things. So they have different options under Visualist. Uh, I need to make myself smaller. One moment, please. Whee! There we go. Okay, uh, so now you can see that there is uh, things under cartography and then spatial statistics. So spatial statistics has a nearest neighbor analysis. So these ones will plot how far away things are um, and what's close. Under your uh, visualist uh, cartography tools though, you'll be able to see that it has other options. So it's got, in this case, uh, chloropleth map, edge map, flow map, and then down at the bottom, you'll see one that's called the spatial autocorrelation map. So if you double click on that one, it's going to pop up with your tool. So spatial autocorrelation map is going to allow us to do that test. So in here, we're going to use the count of the count of the crime tags, whew, count of the crime tags, and we're going to, it's going to say values. So values is important because this is why we switched our data from text into a number. So you can't do this if you don't have numbers. So you'll notice that there's only some of the things that pop up. So in this case, though, we're going to go with crime tags. Now, there is the Lisa indicator. Um, so this will let you do one of two things. So Moran is going to tell you, is my data clustered? That's what it's going to tell you. Is my data clustered or is my data random? And where is it clustered or where is it random? What the Moran one does not tell you is if that cluster is a cluster of a hot spot or a cluster of a low spot. This is what is different about this one. That one is your get us or G. So Moran one, is my data clustered and where is my data clustered or where is it random or where is it what's called dispersed, which is a high value with low values around it. And then the other side of that, this get us or is going to be, is my data high or is my data low clustered? So how is it distributed? Do I have hot spots and cold spots? And where are those hot spots and cold spots? That's what it's going to try and tell you. So we're going to start with our Moran 1 to see whether or not it is clustered and where are those clusters. So this is going to be, uh, then we also have this other one. So we've got queen, rook, and bishop. So this is going to tell you, can I go anywhere? Can I go diagonals? Or am I going top and sides, right? So am I going uh, on my corners? Am I going on my edges? Or am I going on all of them? Those are going to be your ones likely for your polygons. Your K nearest neighbor is going to, is usually more commonly done for points and it's going to choose me and my closest neighbors. So if I am, and the reason we don't do this for polygons is because if you have a polygon that is oblong, for example, it might choose differences which are, um, so it might have the closest things by centroid might be the things moving north south if it's super long instead of doing both. So that's why you want to be careful with it unless you have equally sized polygons is what I'm going to say. So in our, my case, I'm going to say queen. Uh, I'm not going to give it a maximum number of neighbors. This is just going to say if it's touching me, I want to consider that my neighbor. And then this one, I'm going to save this one as my uh, clusters. Um, or I can call this my Moran 1 crime tags is what I'm going to call this one. And I'm going to run this one. Same as before, this one's probably going to take a little bit longer to run because it's a slightly more complex analysis than some of the other things that we've already done. So I'm going to pause it until it's finished. All right, so this actually threw an error, so I'm going to chat about this error first. So this error in here is saying that we have um, this one, so cannot reshape an array size of zero into a shape. So because of where some of these are located and because of uh, 
the fact that it just has nulls around it. What's happened here is is that it's saying that there's no information, that there's no neighbors attached to it, and so that's why it's throwing this error. So what I'm going to do in this case, so because we're dealing with kind of sparse data, uh, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm only going to extract out the Mississippi ones. If you have more data, then it's probably going to be fine. If you have less data, then you might need to extract out just the counties that are of interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a select by, take out just the Mississippi counties because these have uh, probably enough sets of information that it'll matter. Maybe we don't care about the stuff that's being talked about over in Florida, for example. And so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to get rid of the spatial autocorrelation one. So to do a select by attributes, you're going to right click on your county data and you're going to go to open attribute table. Then you're going to go to this uh, select features using an expression. And so this one you're going to, which is a little um, sum sign with the number behind it. So this looks very similar to your calculate uh, field, but it's going to be a little bit different. But same in here, you've got this field in values. That's where you're going to start. So in here, I'm going to go state name, and then I'm going to go equals. Now, in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to go over here. If you have your state name selected and you click on all unique, this is going to give you all the different options you can have. This is going to make life easier so that you don't do things like screw up if it's a single or a double in terms of quotes because it does in fact matter. So in this case, I'm going to go state name equals Mississippi. I only want the Mississippi ones and I'm going to select those features. So up at the top, you can see that there are 60 selected. If I go over here, you can see that there are 60 yellow things over there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to X out of this. I'm going to right click on my county and then I'm going to go to export, export and I do save selected features app. If you do save features as is going to do the whole thing. So the second one down, save selected features as. You're going to have an option here. I'm going to go over. I'm going to save it as my Mississippi County data in this case. You can give it a name wherever you want. Um, and then I'm going to go OK. In my case, I'm going to overwrite this file. So now I'm only dealing with my Mississippi County data. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my visualist. One, so over in my tools here, down to spatial autocorrelation. And then here, for polygons, I'm going to use my Mississippi County data. I'm going to go to my crime tags. I'm going to say it's my Moran 1. I'm going to go that it is queen. I'm going to save it as a temporary layer for now just to see if it's going to run. And they see that one ran really, really fast, and it says it finished. No errors this time around. We go over here, and we now have this nice, fancy map. If we want to see what the map is actually showing us, then I can uncheck my points and now we can see this. Okay, so what do we have in here? So in here we have this hot and low. So where are things clustered and where are things not? So one of the things we can see is, is that we have this dark red one. This one says I'm clustered. This one says I'm dispersed in here. And any of these lighter ones over here says it's a 50-50. Some yes, some no. Uh, it's kind of in the random in this particular case. So clustered, dispersed. So clustered means that I'm high and some of the things around me are high. So this is going to probably be these two are high enough to do that. Blue is saying I'm low, but things around me are high. So it, think of this as kind of a uh, on off sort of thing. So one high, one low, one high, one low. It's a checkerboard style thing is dispersed. Anything that's random is it might be have some high stuff, might have some low stuff. So that's what this one is going to be showing us. Now, if we wanted to see, we're going to actually do that later. Okay, so that's what this one is showing us is that we've got some clustered, we've got uh, one cluster here really, and maybe a cluster over here within a ring around here that also has uh, what looks like high, thing, high and low things that are pairing off against each other. So now we want to see, okay, so clearly it's not all random. There's a lot of random going on in there, but it's not all random. So maybe now we want to see whether or not um, it's clusters of high letters or clusters of low letters, right? So do we have hot spots or cold spots? Where are those? 
So that's going to be our get us ord in this particular case. I'm going to leave the rest of these the same, uh, but I'm just going to run it with get, o, get us ord here. And so now this one ran uh, with the get us ord. So get us ord is going to show us what's happening here. So what happened here is that now we have all red. So we've got all red here, and then we have low, and then we have a low ring around it. Okay, so what's happening here is, right, the, so high, low, right? So we've got high, low, high, oh, sorry, low, high, low, low, high, low, low, high, low, low, high, low. So because of this pairing off, because of this one in here not having a high value, that's why all of these ones are labeled as low. But when we actually do it in terms of is it hot or is it cold, this here is labeled as a hot spot. Right, so all of these have lots, of, they have a lot of crime tags, but that's why, this is why it's different between is it a hot spot and is it clustered or dispersed, statistically speaking. So these are statistically high values, so statistical high cluster, but because of this, these ones in here, right, these ones, and just like this one, has this red, right? So this one is a little bit clustered, it's labeled as clustered, but in the get us or it's blue, it's a dark blue. So this one has statistically lower um, values uh, or lower mentions of crime tags compared to the ones around it. Again, all of these light ones in here, these ones are saying, hey, the, there's, there's not a lot of statistics attached to this, right? So this is a hot spot, but because of that middle section in there, it is labeled as dispersed. Hopefully that kind of makes sense about what the difference between those two things is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, and those, those provide you like a statistical way to look at this. Um, get us ORD and uh, Moran 1 are both statistical methodologies. Um, and so that's just showing you like the statistics attached to it. You don't necessarily need to do that, but it can be useful, particularly if you're pairing that against something else, right? So if I was to do this, uh, I could also do this exact same thing for the population and say, hey, do my hotspots match? Uh, the answer to that is probably no. Uh, this should have a very high population attached to it. So it's weird that there's kind of this ring around the area that is not in the central bit. But that's just what uh, is for this particular set of crimes. So I'm going to uh, stop this video. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about symbology, so how you make your things look pretty.